Okay, this is um, the second part of the tutorial <clears throat> for those people who are actually doing um, the surfing project. Um, by now you should have an image that looks a little bit like this following the tutorial that I showed you. Um, this is my London Bridge one. You're obviously doing bright and photographs. Um, what you might want to do, and what you can see on mine is I've changed the colours. Hopefully you've, you've made them colours that relate to surfing. If you haven't and you do want to edit those, a quick way look just to show you is go to image let's move this out of the way um, image adjustments hue saturation and you can actually change the hue and saturation there and if you um, click on preview then you can see um, that happening as well I'm not going to change mine because I've already changed it to kind of greens and blues you can also make um, the saturation a bit higher if you feel like your image isn't very bright um, but I'm not going to do that either. Uh, the third thing that you can do, because it works better with a really, really high contrast, bright image, uh, is that you can go into image adjustments levels and slide the slider down on the levels to make it a darker image. And I am actually going to do that because the darker the image, the better. We don't want too much white at this stage. So I'm going to click on OK. And once you've done that, that image is then ready to be used. So then you need to open up your scanned image. I've just um, used a vector that I found on the internet, but you will have scanned your silhouette image. And we're going to need to do a little bit of work on that as well before we get started. So again, on your scanned image, you're going to need to make sure that the background, the actual silhouette, is black. Where you've scanned it, you'll probably find that it isn't very black because you've used pen, it hasn't picked it up as detailed as it can, um, it probably is still slightly grey in areas. So if you go to image adjustments, um, levels again, and you drag down the level slider until your image is black. We need to make sure the background stays white, so in order to do that you might find that you have to drag up some of these, um, either or both of these other two sliders. So make sure this bit here is really, really detailed and contrasty. You need to make sure preview is clicked here so that you can see that happening. Uh, and once you're happy, click OK. And you should have a really nice contrasty black on white image. Um, the next thing that you need to do is we need to remove the background. So we're literally going to select the magic wand tool there. Um, set the tolerance to about 20 that's to make sure that it picks up enough of the detail but it doesn't delete all of um, doesn't delete too much by mistake and you can see some of these things down here haven't been selected but that's fine I'm just going to delete them anyway and then once you've done that you can just click on backspace and it should remove the background um, if you find that it won't let you remove the background what you may have to do is click on this little one here duplicate the layer like so click on OK then hide the bottom layer and using the magic wand just delete like that so if it doesn't do it the first way try doing it that way now you've got literally just a silhouette we've got two layers there we can get rid of the underneath layer because we're not going to need that and that's just going to confuse you we have no background and we have a black image. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to go actually back to your um, typography illustration. You're going to select all by going select all and you'll see then you get the little marching ants around the outside to say that it's been selected. You then need to go to, it doesn't matter what tool you're on but it always helps I think to be on the black arrow. Edit, copy click back onto your shape here select it with the magic wand tool again inside the shape so you've got these little marching ants oh no sorry that's not what we're going to do deselect that by clicking on the background it is actually select color range uh, and this color range box would come up you need to make sure that the fuzziness slider is set to 200 and you're literally just pulling that all the way up there you need to make sure that rather than it being on oops, selection, we want it to be on image. So you should be able to see your image in black and white, your silhouette there. You then need to 
take this little sampler and click in the black. So you're basically saying that you want it to select the colour black on your image and click OK. And then everything on your image should now be selected with these little marching ants. We then need to go to Edit, Paste Special, Paste Into. And now you can see that your shape has pasted into your silhouette. You will need to select the black arrow, the move tool, uh, and I'll explain to the reason for that now. You see how some parts are still black. What that means is our image is not quite big enough. You may have the opposite problem, that your image is too big. Um, what you're then going to do is you're going to go to Edit, Transform, Scale, and this little outline box will um, appear and you can see here that you've got your, your outline and your actual shape there and you can actually hold down shift and you do need to hold down shift otherwise it will rescale it wrongly and you need to drag your picture so that it's big enough to fit within your shape you can also move it and at, at this stage I suggest moving it so that most of the image is filled with a colourful shape. What you don't want here is too much white. And what you can do is actually just um, drag it around until you are happy that you feel like most of the image is actually covered within um, with an actual image in it because that's how you want to make it look um, good against the white of the t-shirt. Okay, when you think you're ready and done, click OK. Now at this stage, if you think, oh, I'm still not quite happy with the colour, you can, I believe, go back into this box and edit the colours um, and see what you think in that way. You can also add it, edit the lightness here. So if you wanted to make it a bit darker or a bit lighter, you can do that. You can also add it, edit the saturation. If you wanted the colours to be much brighter, you could do that too. I actually quite like the pink with the blue. So I think that makes it stand out quite a lot. So I'm going to change it again. Click OK. And this is now my silhouette of the surfer. What I have also done it's gone onto the internet and searched for t-shirt and you can actually find this thing, it's called free custom t-shirt and you can just basically take that from the internet it's just a JPEG and all you're going to do is you're going to drag your image across using again the black arrow uh, what you might like to do at this stage is just combine these layers so if you hold on, click on one hold shift down and click on the bottom one now they're both selected so you can go into layer, you can either just link the layers or you can do what I'm going to do and merge the layers. Then you drag this by holding down your click onto your t-shirt design and you can see that's just a little bit too big. So again, edit, transform, scale, hold down shift and drag at the corner to resize the image. And then when you are done, click return. And that is a very effective um, t-shirt design that was actually really quite simple to create. And this is now your, one of your final examples of a t-shirt design, which you can now upload to your blog. Hope you found that easy.